What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Tuesday and welcome to In the Metal. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to be jumping in depth into the six new additions to the watch shop at theoandharris.com from Bulova, Hamilton, Rolex, Jezula Colt, Rolex, and Omega. I say Omega, I don't know why I just said Omega. All right, before we jump in, I would typically do a wristwatch check, but since any of the watches I would be wearing at the moment are currently on the table uh, and stocked on the watch shop at theonarish.com, uh, I have nothing on my wrist. So, uh, so let's jump into the first watch. We've got an amazing uh, Bulova Oceanographer. Uh, this is actually a very, not only rare, but odd variant of, of, of this particular, you know, collection. Uh, the Oceanographer collection is, is entirely made of dive watches. As you can see here on the on the dial, it specifically says 333 feet, um, which is significantly shallower or, or ha you know, half as half as capable uh, of the other bull of a line, uh, which we now refer to as the Devil Divers, which go down to 666 feet. Uh, but still, this watch does not have an aesthetic or a design that kind of fits that, you know, function and title. So it's kind of funny. I mean, it almost reminds me of the conundrum we find ourselves in with the Tudor Black Bay 36. Um, it, it's a dive watch, but it doesn't look like one. Uh, anyway, this is a truly beautiful watch. Uh, not only is it by one of my probably favorite quote unquote humble brands, but it uh, it shares the aesthetic uh, of probably the watch I, I, I hold closest to my heart, the Datejust, reference 1601. Uh, and really even more specifically, it's a jumbo Datejust, which is more closely related to the jumbo Tudors. So it is a lot going on here from its odd identity crisis uh, to its relationship to Rolex and Tudor. But ultimately, this to me is an amazing opportunity to wear own a 38 millimeter watch that shares that Datejust feel, vibe, and function, uh, but with a rare black dial, which to me as a Datejust fanatic um, is an incredible opportunity. You know, it's something that I don't come across very often. Um, I may be hyping this Bulova a lot, but that's probably because of my deep penchant for that Rolex. So uh, this is an amazing watch and I'm very proud to be offering it. Uh, in the watch shop at theowenharris.com. Uh, moving forward, we have a Hamilton Super Compressor. This watch is incredibly interesting. Um, it's a sports watch. It falls in the sports category, of course, as a dive watch. Um, so it, it's not necessarily in my wheelhouse of things that I'm, I'm often, uh, well, at least finding myself wearing. I, I definitely lean towards dress watches more often. But this is probably one of my favorite sports watches of all time. Not only in a very kind of, you know, obvious way does it have that panda configuration, that white and black, but it has some incredible technology. It's a super compressor, meaning the deeper the watch dives, the more resistant to water it becomes. The case actually tightens. Uh, I think that's an incredibly interesting right? Almost, in my opinion, an inconceivable piece of technology. Something that probably, you know, to the lay consumer was revolutionary uh, when it was introduced. And now in retrospect, although most watches are very water resistant, uh, still represents a, a time in history uh, in which that technology was, like I mentioned, unprecedented. So needless to say, I'm an enormous fan of this Hamilton uh, from its look to its function. Uh, and of course, its condition it speaks for itself. Moving forward, we have a Rolex Datejust, reference 1603. Uh, I'll give you the skinny if you haven't heard it already. The Datejust is my favorite watch uh, of all time, uh, and surely my favorite vintage watch of all time. Uh, it's a timeless piece. It's manufactured by arguably the best watch manufacturer of all time. Uh, it's a versatile watch, something that really is just as well suited uh, in a suit as it is in a t-shirt and jeans, which is a rare ability. And finally, it's robust. I mean, if you've held one of these watches, if you've worn one of these watches, you know just how resilient they are. They don't feel dainty, they don't feel delicate, they feel like solid pieces of watchmaking. They almost feel so reliable that they're modern in a weird way. 
Looking closer into the details of this particular date just, we've got one variable that really stands out, and that's this custard tritium. Not only are the puffy tritium dots existent around every single indice around the watch, but on the hands as well. I mean, not all tritium has aged equally. It's just a fact. Uh, some has turned kind of pale and, 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 and whatever it might have been. It's not a bad thing. But when we stumble across something like this, something that's almost like, you know, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of like a haystack in the fall. People who admire vintage Rolex, people who really look closer are in awe. It's just the natural progression, the natural aging of a material that has become so synonymous uh, with vintage Rolex. So to no surprise, uh, this is definitely a watch that I am personally uh, very excited about. On to our next piece, a, a truly classic Swiss watch, something that really epitomizes what it means to be a traditional Swiss watch. It's thin, it's gold, it's a silver sunburst dial, and it's manufactured by really one of the most well-respected and admired watchmakers in the world, Sergio Lecoult. Dialing into the actual aesthetic of the watch, uh, to me it truly is uh, kind of I don't want to get dramatic, but kind of poetic. It, it looks so much like something that would be found on the wrist of, you know, someone from Mad Men. You know, that totally simplistic, traditional, uh, no frills kind of design. And that's the kind of design that so often excites me. And although it might not seem flashy, that's kind of where its charm is. Because the movement inside, the caliber K883, uh, is for watchmakers, if that makes any sense. I mean, this is the kind of movement that is made for a watchmaker to appreciate. Someone who really dives in uh, and, and looks at the finishing, looks at the oscillating rotor, I mean, really takes the time uh, to appreciate what goes into an under the radar watch. It's not ostentatious, it's not in your face. I mean, its movement isn't bragged through an exhibition case back. It's concealed, you know, and yet still they cared enough to take the time uh, and spend the money to put in a movement that is not only, of course, you know, functioning to the supreme kind of level, but decorated as such. I mean, to me, that's just, that's just amazing. It shows how much they actually care themselves, you know, about watches. I can get poetic about Gigi Lecoult all day, uh, but we have to move on. To Rolex 1500, uh, manufactured in 1970. This is probably one of the coolest 34 millimeter Rolexes I've been able to source. The case is sharp, it's been able to retain its original bracelet, but really where this watch takes off is the dial. Uh, originally a matte blue, uh, that's just become kind of a background layer to this custardish beige stardust dial. It's a product of the sun, humidity, and actually loose tritium from its dots, but ultimately it's yielded this completely objectively unique dial, something that could not be replicated. I just think that the idea of owning this, you know, being the only person in the world, you know, lucky enough to own, I mean, a naturally unique Rolex is a very interesting, charming, and attractive idea. I mean, maybe I'm just a sucker for, you know, damaged dials, uh, but they're just damaged so perfectly. Speaking of damaged dials, uh, moving on to our next watch, uh, we've got an Omega Genève. It's a beautiful manually wound watch uh, with a steel case and this almost lemon-y patina dial. The watch dates to 1970, uh, and at least in my opinion, the last 47 years uh, have treated it quite well. So that's it, geeks. These are the new additions to the watch shop at theowenharris.com. From this jumbo bulova to a rare Hamilton super compressor to a Rolex Datejust reference 1603 with out of this world tritium patina to a Jezile Colt with a unsuspectingly incredible mechanical automatic movement actually to a patina Rolex date that at least in my humble opinion uh, is to die for to an Omega from 1970 that while once was probably the epitome of cleanliness and class has become kind of a canvas for the sun. Thank you guys so much for watching. For a closer look at these amazing new additions, head over to the watch shop at theowenharris.com right now.